Hello, you musky ball. I'm Daniel. Oh, Rex, dang it. Well, we've got a gift from magnificent bastard Neil Heath. Neil Heath, you magnificent bastard. Now this this bottle is opened. I have not heard of Balcona's Pilgrimage. Yes, because this is the bottle that Neil donated. Okay. This is the bottle that I had. Best same it. exact batch. Oh, nice. Right, so this is the same release. Got it, got it, got it. Um, so I just thought, let's yeah. not open a new one. There you go. So Neil, you gave us a backup, but we have not reviewed it. What is the Pilgrimage? And so I'm it is sure their malt, gold, uh, uh, brr, brr, Golden Promise. Okay. Yeah. Right, from the one that they bring in from Scotland. That's the go-to. And... Aged, I don't know what is aged in first, probably uh, bourbon barrels or used oak, mm -hmm. maybe new oak, but it is four years old. But it was finished in Sauterne casks, the oh. dessert wine, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet wine, sweeter wine. So, Texas, four years, dessert wine finished. Yeah, okay. Oh, we should, we should mention, uh, hey, we've known the Balcones people a long time. We like yeah. them, we're friends with them. We have former employees that now work with them. Yeah. So, we're going to try and be as objective, objective as possible, but yeah. There's relationships there. There's oh, and, idiots. And uh, we're, we're currently, I think we're sourcing, sourcing low wine. We're sourcing a lot from them. Right. Low wines, right. new make, right. uh, barrels. Because we like the product. And lunch. You know what? We're paying them. Yeah. So we should have higher standards than pretty much anybody else. It's probably pure garbage. Damn, it smells really good. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, is that the main see? difference? Just the wine cast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everything that I like about um, the Balcona single malt, yeah, just finding, that rich. yeah, and that's the Golden Promise that they've been using forever. But it does have this sort of like candied layer to it that's almost like yeah. a hard candy. They did crank up the sweetness, yeah, for sure. It's not overwhelming in the barrel notes mm -hmm. in the nose. Mm -hmm. It's like this really light uh, fruit. You know what it is? And if tea tree oil were sweet, huh? It's not tea tree. If you oil. had like a tea tree oil sucker, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If it was really, if it had a lot of sweetness, mm -hmm. there's that character, not like the pungent part, yeah, but just that 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 um, yeah, the, the note, the, the flavor, the viscous, and that sort of earthy. Yeah, it's not even like tea, earthy. green tea. It's, it's, it's bright. Yeah, it's closer to a green tea. It's bright and almost overly fresh with natural tea tree oil. This isn't. Overly bright and fresh and, and, and almost um, almost botanical like tea tree oil. This is just much more sweet and candied. I'm almost with getting that. a um, stewed apricots. Oh, okay. Hold on a second. Well, you got to like if you ever had that on like a dessert pastry where you no, get like I can apricot. See, yeah, or, there's you know, there's something. And there's ice. Go. It's a la mode. There's ice cream on it. You know. Yeah, maybe a little. If like you put stewed apricots and a little bit of a bananas foster. Mm. I think I'm getting I don't the like no, I, no. Let's take I out the like bananas. bananas. It's more like the rummy element, like the Ooh, sweet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, there is a slight, yeah. almost not metallic is the wrong word, but mm -hmm. there's that sort of shiny rum quality to the sweetness. Kind of the like sweetness a, is a little bit brittle. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that cask is doing a lot of heavy lifting on the sweetness there. Oh, that's nice. It does set you up for the nose. It's not brittle on the palate at mm. all. And it has oh. that really nice lingering oily finish. It just stays. For days, it's still going. It I still barely feel like I even uh, swallowed it. Like yeah. it's still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I swallowed it. It's like no, I didn't swallow it. No, nope. no, there's no. Nope. It's still mm. there. Mm. No. Nope. Yeah. Still there. Mm-hmm. And now it's starting to fade. Finally, it's like a it's like a perfect amount of pepper and a curry. Yeah. Where it just sort of lights you up a little. Yeah. And then it has a slow fade, but you never had to struggle. Yeah. Which you're like, mmm, a so nice glow. We were um, mm. when we were at uh, like we were in Isla. We we're at Brooklady. We we're talking mm. to to Fraser, and we, he was giving us a tour. And he's the I think the um, ambassador, worldwide yeah. ambassador for Brooklady. Um, and one of the things he was saying about the finish, which I'm sure is very common. And everybody thinks about it this way, but I never do. He says, whenever something has a beautiful finish, it means that you can enjoy and experience it, and you're not going back for more and more and more. Because yeah. it's not an exercise in getting drunk whenever right. you're you know, exploring whiskey. You can let it linger. Yeah, you can let it linger, and that's one of the things that they're going for is an incredibly long finish to have that linger so you can have that maximum enjoyment. You're not just burning through a glass because... They're not cheap whiskeys. No, they're not. There's definitely more expensive whiskeys, but you know, it's nice stuff you're going to pay for. It. And you're definitely getting that here. Yeah. 58.5% alcohol. But I've never thought about 
the finish in mm-hmm. terms of why well, sure I'm getting my money your role sure is getting my money's worth now but yeah I, I can taste this and I don't even have to drink it that's, I've always thought about it, I was like oh that's really nice that's impressive I yeah. like that it has a long finish but never from this lens of value well and I I have just simply because things will get graded down when you're judging mm. for the finish dropping off yeah, yeah, yeah so it's like if it presents really nice and then disappears yeah. that that'll grade it down a little what's really weird right now is I'm getting long finish. like if you combined a, an apricot jam on what is the vanilla Oreos? It's like you, know, you get H E B and you get like the Oreo fake Oreo H E B brand, yeah. but then you get the vanilla ones and yeah. they have the vanilla wafer in the cream. Right. Look like an Oreo but vanilla cookie. Right. I'm getting that a little bit, or like a vanilla wafer, okay. but with jam. Okay. In the yeah. nose. I get the jamminess for sure. There's like a toasted. I think you know what? There's like or an a, angel food cake. Like a sweet, toasty almond quality. I think that's probably mm. the rummy bit that I was getting. Mm. Yeah, a little bit of like a buttery sweet, Ooh, a little bit of butter boom. I could see this be like a fruit preserves covered angel food cake. Man, that's good. Damn, you guys, punks. Ooh. You want a little water? I feel, I feel like because the, the habit is to, okay, you wait 15 seconds and you go back for <clears throat> another sip. I'm not ready for another sip. No, it's still, yeah, still enjoying it. It's like, why? I'm not. This is unnecessary. I don't. What does the back say? Oh, it um, opened up. Wandered together. No. It opened up almost a. Um, I need a camelback. Like almost a coffee note, like a latte, like a creamy coffee. It smells almost exactly the same to me. I'm not getting a big difference in the water. Oh. I think maybe the projecting. You said like a, like a creamy latte, mm-hmm. like a creamy coffee. I get that. You may have even planted it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I'm that fast. Yeah. Yeah. I stuck it right in my ear hole. Oh. It, it brought forward all the jammy notes on the palate. I like it, it better without. Yeah, me too. The finish ends more quickly. <clears throat> yeah. The jammy sweetness came forward with water, but everything else subsided a little bit, and then the finish turned into heat yeah. for some reason. Yeah. Man, that's so... That's so simultaneously impressive and intimidating because drops, drops of water. And whenever mm. you're looking to bottle something, yeah. and then bottle something in a large quantity, yeah. for your proof to be off just the tiniest amount it changes everything. The experience that you painstakingly went through, like you know, we've we've been there back in the day, and they have hundreds and hundreds of samples. Yeah, and they're going through all of these different barrels, trying to figure out what's the proportion in the the the, the barrels and the blends and all that. To know that you're even just the tiniest bit off, and it's all of that totally effort, yeah. all of that effort is too, completely irrelevant. Yeah. yeah, that's dude. So much of whiskey making is black magic, and like, hmm, we'll see. Well, it's just really finicky. Yeah, right. Just tiny little minute details actually matter, hmm. and which is why, like, the people that don't obsess about that kind of thing, they're just like, ah, oh, we got it. Just you know, we'll proof it down and bottle it, and they're crash proofing yeah. and. You and know, you taste it and it's like, well, yeah, it's not you can, memorable. You can really tell the difference. I'm not a finicky kind of guy. I kind of do like the big broad strokes. We got to produce. We got to get some done. Right. But when it comes to this, that's not how you reach that top, top tier. Mm. You got to have people like that, it. You got to have people that want to poke at the little edges there. Even if you don't like what it was made of, you can taste the ones where it's like there was intention in this. Yeah. Even if I don't like where it went and I wouldn't have made that choice. This was not a half-assed thrown together. Yeah, yeah. Is it storming all of a sudden? No, I got a little rain. I can see the the trees Jeez. flinging through the blinds there. Yeah, that's new. It was fine when we got into the vault. My scoot is getting all wet. Probably, yeah. The revolution will not be YouTubed. Okay. Mm. okay. I came here because I was broken ass the cashier at the bougie liquor store at the bottom of my girlfriend's bougie luxury building in a bougie yuppie neighborhood. What's the cheapest whiskey you got? And was handed this. It was the Clan McGregor? Yeah. Yeah. As I was walking up to her apartment, I searched YouTube and found this video and all I was thinking is, please don't be bad. Please don't be bad. Please don't be bad. (laughs) We even, so I went back and looked it up. Yeah. Even the first time we ever tried Clan McGregor in the old vault, we totally like, 
almost were embarrassed to admit we liked it. It was, and we kept saying things like, "Look, look, for under twenty dollars, for under twenty dollars, for under twenty dollars." Right. So we this, had had that before. This is actually. Was good. that the like the green plaid? Yeah, yeah, thing? yeah. Wow, I had yeah. no memory of that. And then it oh, ended yeah. up in a video. Wow. The yeah. cheapest. The cheapest. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but even back in the day, we yeah. were like, embarrassingly fine with it. It's like, damn it, this is this is actually fine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's better content if we can sh on it. Yeah, it's boring, but smoke a little bit smoky, but it's actually not bad for right. for the like eight dollars. Oh my. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Like, yeah. Here's what it came that episode came down to. Whenever it's vodka mixed with trace amounts of whiskey, mm. it's bullshit. It's totally terrible. But whenever it's no an actual it. whiskey, whiskey, it's probably fine. Mm. How do they make money off of that? I can't imagine. Like, you know, it's going to be barely three years old, right. just barely legal whiskey in Scotland. Right. It's going to be down to forty. Right. It's uh, a lot of grain, mm -hmm. so that's a larger, yeah. cheaper bulk produced. Call them still, right. and plastic bottles or glass bottle. Either way, right. you figure the bottle's probably two bucks mm -hmm. all in. Yeah. Whiskey, I mean, still they might be clearing two dollars or three dollars, but that's to the distributor. Yeah. How the f are they making money on that thing? They don't poke at the edges. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it turns out like it washes out. It now comes here, out in the wash. Now here's the question: a little. When it comes to just enjoyment mm -hmm. for enjoyment. Yeah. A Clan McGregor eight dollar, eh. right? Yeah. Versus something like this, no, which is going to be oh, what is what is this, like 60, 70 bucks? At 80, least eighty yeah. bucks. At least. Okay, so you could have how many Clan McGregors? You could have you could have ten. Yeah. yeah. Ten bottles of Clan McGregor. Four. But you know bottles. what? I would rather have this and not drink for the other nine. Yeah. And then come back to it again. Yeah. Than do Clan McGregor over this. Mm-hmm. But that's true of the right too. I it would rather. It depends on the context. Yeah. Like, you, do I need to provide beverages for a large number of in people? In that case, yeah. No, so the Claire McGregor lives in my mind not as like a cheap replacement for myself, mm -hmm. but as like if I go to a party or a wedding and they're like, open bar, and like, what scotch you got? And they're like, we got Claire McGregor. It's like, oh. I wouldn't be like, right. oh no, I'm too good for that. Right. I'd be like, nah, eh, f it, right. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where it lives for me. And then they pull out the plastic squeeze bottle yeah. and like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Pearson, burnt match is phosphorus, not. Sulfurious. Okay. So it's not sulfur. He said no. it's phosphorus. Here's the thing. It's from, actually from bold. Daniel's notes. I don't want to read that. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> this is no. This is real because one yeah. of the things when you're trying to change your uh, train yourself on mm. palates and nosing notes. Yeah. One of the things to do, like you do with tea tree oil, hmm? is when somebody says something, go see if you can find that thing and develop a specific reference for when someone says tea tree oil, you know what they're talking about. And yeah. so I got so many peaches now. The difference between going back phosphorus and sulfur; mm -hmm. those are actually two different smells. Yeah. And matches have both. Um, so it's probably more specific to say match, burnt match, yeah. than sulfur. Sulfur is like rotten eggs. Yeah. Yeah. But sulfur is in a burnt match. Go back and see if you get a little bit of the uh, the peaches. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's millions like, of that's, peaches. Well, that, um, almost peaches for free. That's the main, main flavor I'm getting now. Mm. The front With the water. As I said, it, it exploded the sweetness to the front of everything. Mm. Yeah. Oh. And dropped everything else. It's good, though. Still All good. Right. Yep. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us.